Shalom and Bruchim Abayim. My name is Rabbi Yitzchak Shapira. Chances are that you are just like me right now, preparing, put the final touches on your sukkah. We want to wish you Chag Sukkot Sameach and to invite you to a special series right here from our sukkah to you and to your family. We call this series Ushpezin. We welcome you to sit back every day, learn with us Torah, go with us to the word of the Agadah, to the word of the Midrash, have some special guests with us, all happen here under the Sukkah. In this first episode of Ushpizim, you're going to go back with me to Israel. We found it appropriate to go back and to start this series of Ushpizim in the land of Israel, where you're going to learn an amazing story about Yaakov Amin. Who is Yaakov Amin? What he has to do with our sages and why is it important to us as messianic believers to tell the stories of ancient messianic Jews. Well, we invite you for this first lesson. I hope you will be blessed. God bless you. I hope you join us every day and we pray that this season of Sukkot, each and every one of us will in gather together. Open your sukkah, invite somebody. Our sukkah in Avatami Ministries is big enough and so is yours. Let's get ready for the gathering. It's coming soon. You and I together, all the way up to Jerusalem. Tune in tomorrow for another lesson. God bless you and Chag Sameach. Okay. חברים, אחר הצהריים טובים, good afternoon from Israel. I'm going to give you a second to catch your breath and join this broadcast. You know that every day we're bringing you an update from Israel. First of all, I want to say something that uh, Pastor Matt is with us. Don't worry, he's okay. He's just doing the filming work right now. We're supposed to speak today about the seat of Moses. We mm -hmm. promised you a shiur. But because the magnitude of the discovery that took place earlier today, we can't do seat of Moses today. That's coming to you tomorrow, the seat of Moses. But we have, yeah, this is going to be a worldwide release, sensation, what we're going to be released tomorrow. So just hold your breath have to subscribe to our YouTube channel or you will miss this. You're going to have to trust me when I say to you. The archaeological work in Israel here is phenomenal, what discovered. Today we held the keys to the forbidden gates, I call it, and we we're able to come on in. But before we conclude, that's why you're going to have to be patient. But before we end the day, we have another shocking, absolutely incredible update from here from Israel we have been recording a course called the voices in the footsteps excuse me at the footsteps of ancient messianic Judaism as a matter of fact the discovery that happened earlier today or we had today I told Pastor Matt that we're going to release this segment to the world for free because it is so important but before we leave this day before we conclude this day, I have to make it with, I, I can't take credit for this, uh, Eldad Kenan is with me here. He lives like literally around the corner from here. Yeah. We are in the Arab village. No, it's a city. City, not village. Oh, Sakhnin. Sakhnin. Sakhnin is, a, as you know, the way everybody knows soccer and another famous team, Bnei Sakhnin. Uh, but this is a, a mostly Muslim, but also um, most, mostly Muslim, but also 20% Christian. And I want you to hit share right now. Because I am going 
to share with you and show you an incredible evidence of Messianic Judaism in Sakhnin. It's amazing that we find it here in Sakhnin, but it's really not, because this area was full of Messianic Jews. And Jews. And, uh, yeah, Jew Jews as a whole. So, and Sakhnin is mentioned in the Mishnah and the Talmud. Mm, absolutely. So we are inside a residential area, I must say, Actually, interestingly enough, it's in the Christian era, area. Neighborhood, yeah. Neighborhood here. This house is Christian. Yeah, it's a Christian home. And I want you guys, pay attention. This is big. You know, I always, don't always say it's big, but this is big. This is very important. What we're about to share with you right now. Uh, Eldad, <clears throat> where do we start? Should we start first with a yeah. subscription here? And I would like everybody to see this, what it says. Me'arat Rabbi, Resh with apostrophe is Rabbi, Rabbi Yehoshua de Sachnin. Of Sachnin. The tomb of Rabbi Yehoshua of Sachnin. First of all, Eldad, who is Rabbi Yehoshua of Sachnin? What well, do we know about him? He was an expert in, in Midrash and Haggadah. Okay. He was a uh, very dedicated uh, student of Rabbi Levi. Okay. <clears throat> who was the expert in Agadah and, and Midrash. Okay. And he is he was a fourth uh, generation rabbi, living. Fa fourth born born generation Amor 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 yeah. Yeah. So the Amoraim era, remember, come after the Tanaic era. Yeah. Okay. So that's what what we talk about fourth century. Um, Roughly fourth. Uh, early, uh, late. Late third century? Early fourth. Early fourth, yes. Okay, so about 300 years, give or take, yeah. after Yeshua. Yeah. Now, this yeah. seems very clear. Yeah. This is, first of all, it's very odd. Why would they have a tomb like this in. He, he, here in this place? It's just kind of strange. Well, this, this happens. That stuff happens. Yeah. But, there is more to this story. The thesis that, ladies and gentlemen, that we would like to present to you this evening for us, early evening, early morning for you, is that Messianic Jews were here, Messianic Jews were knowledgeable of the Torah, yeah. and Messianic Jews even impacted the rabbis, the giant of the time. Let me say it again. People say all the time, oh, those Messianic Jews, they didn't really know the Torah. They were marginal Jews. They were like, you know, like the Messianic Jews of today. Torah light. Well, no. let's see if this is the case. You want to talk about why this is significant? Well, Messiah, I don't want to steal the thunder, but I'm going to give you a little drum roll. Okay. Here you go. <clears throat> I give you the honor. Well, we start with this sign. This sign is very modern. And we do know that in 1956, this tomb was, until 1956, this tomb was related <coughs> to someone named Yaakov the Min, which means wow. Yaakov the Messianic Jew. Let me say it again. The word Min is an acronym. Ma'amine Yeshua Anotzei. Yeah, but Min is Anotzei. Ma'amine Yeshua Anotzei. Yeah, Min. The acronym of the word. No, no, no. Min is just... Yeah, but it's also an acronym. Oh, it's an acronym. Ma'amine Yeshua it. But the Minim in general, although Rabbi Bernstein might disagree, but it is in general speaking about the followers of Yeshua. Jewish followers of Yeshua. Jewish followers of Yeshua. And here in this cave, it says another rabbi name. Yeah. Now I want you to listen for a moment for an expert. You brought the book with you. Yeah. And I want you to hear this paragraph. You want me to read or you want to read, read it? I would like to read it to you. Ancient Christian Villages of the Galilee by Bellarmino Bagatti. Very important book actually. It says, in the article on the Min Yaakov in La Terra Santa, I mentioned the fact 
that the celebrate Jewish Christian, Messianic, yeah, I'm getting there, Messi Jewish Christian apostle of the second century, we're talking second century, is said to be a rod originate from Kfar Sima'ai in some texts, from Kaf Sachnin in others. Now, when was this article was written? And published. Published. 19... 56. 56. In 1956, this was not this here. was not here. Rabbi Yoshua de that is not his place. No. You might ask the question. He converted. <laughs> you might ask the question, who put this sign here? Who do you think put this sign here? Religious Jews? Orthodox religious Jews who knew by no doubt, knew the Jewish tradition of who and is the local talk. tradition and the local tradition, yeah, of who is which Ill. I trust. Now because it's local. Now, why Yaakov Amin is so significant? Well, there is there is significant story yeah. about him. And that can you share in the highlight yeah, for us? The highlight, the, no the, problem. The highlight of the story, and you can find this story, I believe, in the Babylonian Talmud, but it's going to be in Yerushalmi. We will order to safety, just order to safety. We will look it up for you. I will find it. Yeah, no we problem. will find it no problem for you. But does that give us the understanding who is Rabbi Yaakov Amin and why this is significant? He's not Rabbi, he's Yaakov Amin. Okay. We're calling Yaakov. If, let's, if put in an, uh, let's put it this way. He's good enough to teach a rabbi. Yeah. So does that not make him a rabbi? Okay. He is, but he okay. doesn't have the title. Okay. okay. And I'm not expecting to see the title in, in rabbinic literature. Okay. Well, but we do know some things about him from Jewish literature that nobody can say, oh, they love Messiah. No, 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 they don't. They don't. So, can you, can you share briefly well, this First, thing? Yaakov is a generic name for male oh. Min. Yeah. First. Second. They, uh, it's interesting that they picked the word name Yaakov, though, you know? No, it's, it's not a surprise. It's just because it, Yeshua's brother. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm saying Yaakov is, they picked the purpose because it's such a common name. Yaakov. Among others, no. No? No. Oh, okay. It okay. was common among Messianic Jews. No, because Messianic... Uh, but what among Jews as a whole, Yaakov? No. No? No. So Yaakov... Show me how many Yaakovs you know in, in the Mishnah Talmud. So Yaakov is like, call somebody a Yoshki, kind of a common for... for Messianic Jew. Okay. More, so so more. it could be that his real name was not Yaakov. It was not Yaakov? Maybe... You, you, are you saying it's generic? It's generic, but he is well known as Yaakov the Mir. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, this is an historical fact that recorded on the Talmud. Please, yeah. Feel, yeah. please yeah. understand that. So continue with the story. Yeah, there is Rabbi Eliezer the Tana, the second uh, second generation Tana. Okay, He's quite a big rabbi. He was walking in a street in Tipori. Tsipori Cipo is a very, very important, very big city. Yes, where Rabbi Yudana says. Yes. Live. And uh, he met this uh, Yaakov the Min in the street, and they had a small talk. And uh, Yaakov the Min taught Rabbi Eliezer something, which Rabbi Eliezer loved very much. He enjoyed the teaching. He was teaching the Rabbi Eliezer. Yeah. I want everybody to know. Yeah. It was a Devar Torah. It was a word of Torah. Otherwise, Rabbi Eliezer doesn't listen. He doesn't listen. No. Wait, this is important already to understand something. He is talking to him Devar Torah. Yeah. A Messianic Jew giving a Devar Torah. And a Midrash on Devar Torah. <laughs> oh, oh, wow, wow. It's a Midrash. It's a Midrash. Yeah. And Rabbi Eliezer, he loved it. He enjoyed it. He enjoyed the lesson, the Shi'u. But then something happened. But then someone blew the whistle about Rabbi Eliezer in, in contact with the Messianic Jew. So uh, the uh, Roman government, governor uh, summoned Rabbi Eliezer and wanted to try, try him. To try Rabbi Eliezer yes. because of his connection. connection. Because now he is a suspected Messianic Jew. Oh, so Rabbi Eliezer is a suspected Messianic Jew because he received Dvar Torah from the Messianic Jew. Yeah. Wow. I hope everybody can. This, this is amazing. This is what the Roman thought. Wow. So, when the trial starts, the uh, Roman govern, governor or 
judge asked Rabbi Eliezer, come on, you're an old man, we know you, quite a serious person. Do you, are you playing with this nonsense? So Rabbi Eliezer said, I trust the judge. The Roman believed that what Rabbi Eliezer said is, I, I trust, trust Hashem, God. I trust the judge, the yeah. Dayan. So he meant that he trusts Roman oh. as a judge. So when the Roman heard Rabbi Eliezer saying, I trust the judge, he said, okay, I, now I know you're a serious person, you can go. Demos is your free. But Rabbi Eliezer, ever since this day, to the end of his life, he was sorry and in agony that he accepted a lesson from a Messianic Jew. Oh my goodness. And we have it all written. We have it all written. What can we learn from this lesson? Well, I would, the first word that comes up to my mind is hate. Hate? Uh, uh, the Messianic Jews were really by the religious, not by the common people, as we no, already no. proved. By the as I told you, the rabbis had problems with Messianic Jews, not the lay Jews. Only the rabbis had problems with Messianic Jews. Wow! Because of politics. Politics. Yeah, of course. That's <clears> number one. Yeah. Number two is. Can I get number two? Can I give you my number two? Go on. Yeah, it's like the, uh, Letterman. Top five, Jay Leno top five, you know. Okay. I'll give you my number two. My number two. He was well versed in Torah and Midrash. Midrash. To give a Midrash to go on one of the Geonei Ado, to one of the great in the Wow! Wow! That is unbelievable. Yeah. It is believable. It's be believable three because three it's documented. Days, after these three days, it should be believable. Because people always ask, well, just Messianic Jews, they had nominal knowledge of Judaism. No, no, no. The reason they become Messianic because they didn't know Torah. That's nonsense. They became Messianic because they know the Torah. Oh my gosh. You have any other? This is the two I'm taking, the big one. Number three. Okay. Do you have a number three? You okay. go ahead. Okay, here you go. Here is my number three. This is going forward. Jewish tradition knew that this is his place because the name has been changed. It is yeah. cl clear as glass, okay? And I would say that for me, um, number four that is important is the uh, Yaakov, Yaakov the Min was in part, he was there. The Messianic Jews were not separate. No! They were there! He was there. If he was seen in Golan Heights. Yeah, yeah, but to be, I even think that he is with Gedola Tanaim, one of Gedola Tanaim, face to face like that, yes. it's meant to me that they were right there. And they know the each other, they start speaking. Oh my Just like two persons meet each other. And here in, in 1956, it was still Yaakov the Mainstone. Ay, 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 ay. How much we try to wipe Messianic Judaism even today. On this they land. still do. It's very something. Yeah. Is there anything interesting inside for us? Let's go see. It. Wow. Are you guys excited? If you are, hit share and like. I'm telling you, you're not going to see it anywhere. Go subscribe, like, give this man a, a pat on the back, and pray for us. I know. I don't know where we are. So. <laughs> I hope we're, we're okay. 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 We're okay. Here we go, I Matt. This uh, lower layer of stones. By the way, this is the Muslim prayer right now, yeah. in case you wonder. He's praying for us. Yeah. The lower layer stones are Herodians. Wow! Come on, come on, come on, come on. Show them that maybe you go down and, and oh, point, yeah. point to this. This is significant, guys. This is very significant. We're going to go to a grave. Okay, everybody catch that? To a grave of a Messianic Jews who, who, who teach Torah to Gwanda Doleya Do. Come on. Listen, I hope we're okay. I hope it's not a call to attack. But wait, look at these stones. You're saying this is validating that these stones are like a second, a second century? No. no. First century. It's First Herodian. century Herodian stones. Unbelievable. We're going to walk not inside the tomb. I hope it's going to be too dark. Let's see what we can find out. Wow.
Okay. Come on, come on. Yeah. Come on. Here we go. We have classic Jewish dishes here. Wow. Wow. This is the way, you, maybe you will say a word for the, those who are watching yeah, us okay. now live. What makes those a classic, classic niches? Well, it's the same level of the floor, of the tomb floor. And there would be a giant stone here to block this, right? Yeah, or yeah. a few big stones. What we've seen in, in Beit Okay, okay. And we have three niches. One, two, three, okay. But here we have... Oh my God! I got it! I got it. It underwent a change. I got it. I got it. Okay, let's. I, I, I'm your student right now. Okay. Tell me if I got it wrong. The arch is typically not classical Jewish. No. It is a Christian or Messianic Christian Jewish. Jewish. And the reason is, is we explain. Not before mid first century. That, yeah, this changed. But this could be before. Yeah, this is what we've been teaching throughout the course. Yeah. We don't have time to go through this, but we already proven that throughout the course yeah. we were recording. By the way, if you are not enrolled in this course, you're crazy. It will change your life. Get into this course. This prove that whoever was ill was a messianic. Was a messianic Jew, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, a messianic Jew. Which followed a complete Jew. Oh my gosh. Maybe we see here a process of changing. Oh my gosh. A messianic Jew and a Jew, uh, non messianic, buried right next to each other. Maybe the family just changed some concepts. Oh my gosh. This is shocking. And this is absolutely shocking. This is a reminder of what we call the Christian ornate, ornate, okay. the praying person. Right, right there, this? This and that, okay. behind you. So whether or not the uh, sarcophagus is Christian, I think it's not because you can't get this in through this. This is wider. Okay. We can measure it. This point to this point, it's a no go. It's a no go. So, what is that telling us? That? Well, what is that telling us? We that do is know that, English? that we do know that this wall is a built wall. Okay. So, maybe this was here before. No, they put it in and then they, and then they built it. Yeah. Wow. What a stunning, what a show. And we have more niches here. One, two, three. Listen, if the min was here, so. and Jewish people are here, and they would view me as a min, I have a hard time believing they would be buried together unless they truly view this as or a Jewish, a Jewish. Or the, the same family, but the, uh, Yaakov, his ancestors. We're completely Could Jewish. this be Yaakov ancestor, his family? In these niches? Yes. Why not? Why not? If this this was really his, it means it belongs to his family. We know the tombs are familiar. Let me put you on the spot. Okay. I'm just warning you, we're reconnecting now and then because there's no signal in here. Okay, go out, get out, get out, get out. Let's go out. I think. Are we back? We will be soon. I can, you can see that this yes. wall is built. Right. I'll tell you. Hold on. Hold on okay, yep. Okay. Sorry, guys. We lost connection for a moment. In this incredible cave. Don't worry. The high-quality movie will come to you. I'll ask you a question to the camera. Okay. To the camera. Zoom in on his face. <laughs> no. Not like this. <laughs> no, but in a question of evidence. Do you honestly believe, believe based on what you say, that this is Yaakov Hamin? I believe Stone, this Wait, 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 let me finish this question. Yaakov Hamin has been buried here, and potentially his family. What is the probability? Give me a percent, 10, 50, 80, give me something. 
Because well, this is too good to be true. I know. This is this too is good to be I'm, true. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be more cautious. Where I'm no, I want a direct answer. Don't okay, play okay. games. No, no, I'm not playing games. As a historian, there is never 100%. But it's, very, it's highly probable that this is the tomb or mausoleum of Yaakov de Min and his family. Yes. Chavarim, we know a couple of things beyond shadow of a doubt. This is a first uh, century structure. That's something we cannot doubt. No. We also cannot doubt that Rabbi Yudhishua de Sakhnin is not his original He's place. He's not the original owner, no. So, the question we leave to you today, who is it? Well, we have we, a tradition here. We have a tradition that is proven that this is the place of Yaakov. The, uh, yeah, and in terms of uh, him being in Sipori, uh, the, the, the geography definitely fit in. Yeah. The geography definitely makes sense. Yeah. Okay? Absolutely. The fact of the matter that we see an arch, which is a change that happened with Messianic Judaism yeah. alone, and with a, a, a classic a traditional niches together, telling me this. This is me. You don't have to agree with me. That's okay. Hey, Messianic Jew and his family, maybe not all of them believed, were buried together. Yeah. They're together as a family. I wish there was a pit here that would even validate the thing small. But, but they, keep, they could keep the bones. They could, because it's a, because, yeah, because it's a, it's a family, yeah. family thing. Eldad, yeah. this is a shocker. This is a bomb. It's your first time here. Listen, you... Uh, by the way, yeah, it's going to be amazing that Kenan offer, offering after, after the Chagim, a course at Yeshiva Tshuvu. It's going to be a big announcement about this. The course will change your life. But to me, this... I mean, except to the big discovery to the world that we're going to give later tomorrow, subscribe to our YouTube channel. You're going to miss out. But this, to me, something about this really touched my heart, especially because it's a of milestone. Because the story, especially because of okay. the story we know. So, Chaverim, we, as always, we give you the evidence, and we ask you to do exactly what Paul says: test everything. Why do we need the Talmud? This is why we need the Talmud, because the Talmud is giving us story in a color to understand what was taking place, especially. The Yerushalmi here in the and the Tosefta. And the Tosefta. We're gonna to look up this story, so so mm -hmm. I'm, we will definitely, most definitely, we look it up. But from us here at uh, Avatami Ministry, Shiva Chuvu, and I'm speaking for Pastor Matt also, who has been so diligent in in doing this live to you, breaking his back at Kosher Pastor. This is for you. We care about your education. We care about this training. We truly passionate about this if you're blessed by this continue to support pray we will bring you much much more as the lord allow us but for right now chew on this this need to be shared all over the world i am telling you this is amazing and that thank you every you're person welcome. will have to reach his own conclusion no problem i think i reach mine i hope you reach the same one i did god bless you Lila from israel Lila.